Myers, makers of Mom, the safer deodorant, and Vitalis for well-groomed hair, bring you Duffy's Tavern transcribed with our guest tonight, Ed Wynn, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meets eat. Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, where was I last night? Uh, I went to the opera. Yes, the opera, you know, uh, Misery with the French Horn. <laughs> yeah, Duffy, th th there's two kinds of people that go to the opera, you know. There's them that goes because they think it's the thing to do, and then there's their husband. <laughs> yeah. Then there's the type that goes just, uh, they go just because they get free tickets. Yes, uh, I had a very good seat. <laughs> in fact, for opera, it was the best time. Yeah, I was behind a post in the last row. <laughs> and guess who I met there? He's coming down here tonight. Uh, Ed Wynn. Wynn, Duffy. As if in, uh, if you're married, you can't. <laughs> huh? Who is he? Uh, well, uh, he's one of those uh, lowbrow comedians. <laughs> yeah, you know, the kind that gets laughed. <laughs> you can't place him? Oh, look, Duffy, remember in the old days when you turned on the radio and you used to get a lot of static? Well, if the static giggled, it was win. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, Duffy, I think we've had enough fun for one nickel. I'll call you back. Hey, Miss Archie, uh, uh, how'd you like the opera last night? The opera, well, Eddie, it was sort of in between. In between? Yeah, too loud for sleeping and too soft for snoring. Uh, <laughs> well, how, how'd you happen to go? What do you mean, how'd I happen to go? Well, uh, when you left here, you was cold and sober. <laughs> oh, well, I thought I told you, you know, I had an Annie Oakley. You know that uh, Senor Vermicelli from the opera company? Yeah. Well, I waited on him the other day, and he asked me if I liked opera, and before I had a chance to answer, he gave me a free ticket. <laughs> well, with the kind of service you give people, <laughs> you deserved it. <laughs> well, yeah. Didn't you like nothing about the opera? Well, just one thing. What? The blonde sitting next to me. <laughs> uh, she and uh, her and I, me and... Well, anyway, uh, we had quite a literary discussion about music. <laughs> and uh, somehow I, uh, I happened to mention about the uh, opera that I wrote. The opera you wrote? You seem aghast. <laughs> you ain't never told me you wrote an opera? Well, Eddie, I don't tell you everything. Like, for instance, I didn't tell you that I took a bath last week. <laughs> Did you? Well, no, I'm just using it as an example. Of <laughs> you write an opera. Why not? Some guys shoot pool, some guys go out with dames. I happen to write operas. <laughs> and mine is one that the people will be able to understand, too. Now, take last night. There was a lot of suffering going on, you know, but nobody knew why. With my opera, it's going to be different. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> As I say, uh, <clears throat> why is it that people enjoy an opera on the radio so much, Eddie? Why? A very good question. <laughs> the reason is it's because Milton J. Cross keeps interrupting, you see. He makes everything clear, and that's what gave me the idea for my opera. I uh, wrote one with a built-in commentator. Yes, well, who's going to be this, uh, this commentator? Ed Wynn. I'm going to try the opera out here tonight, and Ed Wynn will do the commentating. And, Eddie, this opera can't miss. I can see it already. It's opening night. Me name is up in light. Limousines driving up. Ladies with evening gowns. Men with tails. Oh, huh? <laughs> well, hello, Finnegan. Uh, what's it doing? Uh, writing an opera. Oh. I is it tough to write an opera? No, well, not at all. Uh, how does it work? Mm, simple as ABC. Oh, yeah? How does that work? <laughs> well, Finnegan, uh, to write operas, you've got to visualize. You know, for a stupid guy, you've got a very intelligent face. 
Uh, thanks, Josh. Yeah. I'm sure that if you had been born with a forehead, it would have been a high one. <laughs> well, as I say, uh, you've got to visualize the thing as a whole. In the head? In your case, yes. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Now, as I say, if you visualize the... Uh, uh, what's that word again, I... Uh, visualize. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a pertinent question? Go ahead. What's the meaning of the word pertinent? <laughs> uh, I'd answer that question, but I fail to see where it is uh, irrelevant. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Arch. I think that covers it. Did I hear that you wrote an opera? Yeah, that's right. And you're going to put it on here tonight? Why not? Should I tell him? <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, just because you studied singing with that broken down Yasha Pena Slavnik... Broken down? You heard me, broken down. Archie, I'll have you know that Yasha Pena Slavnik is a very high-priced teacher. How much does he charge? Fifteen dollars a lesson. Fifteen bucks a lesson? Yeah. Of course, if you pay cash, there's a discount. How much is it then? Twenty cents. <laughs> of course, to get the discount, you have to bring your own piano. Well, naturally, but even Miss Duffy at twenty cents, I think the guy is still robbing you. Oh, yeah. Yasha says that I'm his most promising pupil. He does, huh? Yeah. And believe me, that's quite a compliment coming from a man who once shook hands with Nick Lucas. <laughs> Maybe we can use you tonight. As a singer? Certainly not as a showgirl. Uh, now get in the back room and start practicing. Well, why do I have to practice? I would like my opera singers to practice what they screech. Uh, now let me see. Who else could we get to sing the other part? Say, uh, Arch, uh, Eddie tells me you're putting on an opera tonight. That's right, Joe. Uh, do you need a singer? Everybody wants to get into the act. <laughs> yeah, Joe, we need a singer. Uh, you want to audition me? Okay. Orito Pagliaccio. Singers run in my family, you know. I can see why. <laughs> Joe, uh, maybe you better stick to singing the praises of Vitalis, huh? Well, naturally, that I do with more enthusiasm. Well, tell me why, Joe, in so many words. Because Vitalis keeps your hair well-groomed. Vitalis tames down dry, unruly hair and helps hair that's been dried out by sun, wind, and water. Why, no other hair preparation can give your scalp and hair better protection than Vitalis and the 60-second workout. For the Vitalis formula contains two of the same ingredients that many skin specialists prescribe for dry, flaky scalps, plus all the other extras that make your hair more handsome, more healthy-looking. So try the Vitalis 60-second workout. Let it prevent scalp and hair dryness Route flaky dandruff and give you the best looking, healthiest looking head of hair you ever had. You'll look your best tomorrow if you get a bottle of Vitalis today. Well, Eddie, I got the opera finished. Oh, that's nice. What are you going to call this masterpiece? Well, I was thinking of calling it uh, Carmen. Hmm, that's a tricky little name. <laughs> Thank you. It don't make sense, of course, but it has a nice operatic feel. Mm -hmm. uh, now, let me uh, just polish this thing a little now. Mm -hmm. This half note here, I think I'll change that to a quarter note. In case a little dame sings it. You know. <laughs> now, this minor fifth, I think I'll make that a demented fourth. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. Now, let's hey, see. Hey, hey, Art, that guy that just come in. Yeah? He looks like an idiot. Finnegan, that's Ed Wynn. Hello, Archie. <laughs> Finnegan, I think you was right. <laughs> you know, I hope I'm awfully late, Archie. You hope you're late? Why? Well, my face joke depends on it. <laughs> I thought that was clever when I put uh, that in there. <laughs> I had an awful time getting here, Archie. I had an awful time, really. Yeah? Uh, well, didn't you take the number eight bus like I told you? The number eight bus? Yeah. For heaven's sake, no. I came the hard way. <laughs> Two fours. 
Hey, that's a very funny joke. <laughs> well, Mr. Wynn, I'm glad you came down here tonight. You see, I got a little proposition. You know, that reminds me of a joke. What's the joke? Well, it's the joke. I think you'll enjoy this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's the joke about the fellow who brought a gale home to, to the gale's father. Uh -huh. See? Now, you got to follow this. Uh -huh. So the father, the father says to the boy, says, what have you done to my daughter? Look at her. She's all sun -tanned. Where'd you hear this? <laughs> so the fellow said to the girl's father, he said, well, I took her to the beach. <laughs> and the father said, you did, eh? Will you leave this house and never darken my daughter again? <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> what a good joke. <laughs> well, anyway, you see... <laughs> I was to the opera last night. Did and I ever tell you the joke about the man who had only two teeth, Archie? Two teeth? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The man uh -huh. had two teeth. One in his upper jaw and one in his lower jaw. <laughs> this uh -huh. is very funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> one day, the tooth in the lower jaw said to the tooth in the upper jaw <laughs> that we ought to get together for lunch sometime. <laughs> Mr. Wynn, uh, as I was saying, I went to the opera oh, last night. Oh, that reminds me, you know. I see, I'm in quite a predicament. A predicament. Uh, yes, I've been having trouble with my stomach, and the doctor told me to diet. <laughs> but he didn't tell me what color, you know. <laughs> I can see I'm in a bit of a predicament myself. <clears throat> yeah? Uh, you see, uh, I went to the opera last night. Oh, that night. reminds me of another one. That's <laughs> what you said. Do you like food, Archie? Wouldn't sit down to a meal without it. <laughs> that sounds funnier than anything I've said so far. <laughs> That's a dirty trick. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like food. Anyhow, Archie, if you want a wonderful dinner, I want you to take down this recipe. Will you do that? Okay. Well, now, first, you take a large tasty and you clean the tasty very carefully. Uh-huh. Then you take a goose, which is a little smaller than the turkey, and you place the goose inside of the turkey. <laughs> now, inside the goose, you place a little duck. Then inside the duck, you put a chicken, and in the chicken, you put a squab. What a dish that is. Inside the squab, you put an olive, you see? An olive? Yeah. Then you cook the whole thing for about three hours, and it's wonderful. <laughs> I imagine the part around the wishbone must be great. <laughs> but as I was saying, Mr. Wynn, you see, the trouble with opera is that the people don't understand it, you Archie, see. last week I took my girl to the opera, Archie. What do you think happened? What? <laughs> well, you'll enjoy this. <laughs> I keep laughing because I love life, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you the whole story. I took my girl to see the opera got a Dameron, you know. Watch your language, please. <laughs> We're making this up, you know, as we go along. <laughs> so far, surprise, he's ahead of me. Surprise! <laughs> surprise, surprise! Shall we start again? the whole thing over again? No. <laughs> Let's take it from the gutter, good, the gutter demo. All right. <laughs> Anyhow, what happened? I took my girl to the opera, got a Dameron, and I didn't hear one word of the opera, Archie. No? She talked and talked and talked all through the opera. I didn't hear any of the overture. I didn't hear any of the singing. Even after the opera, she kept talking. I heard none of the opera got a Dameron. And last night, she called me up again, and she asked me would I like to take her to the opera, this time for Rigoletta. Do you know what I said? <laughs> I said, I'd love to take you. I've never heard you in Rigoletta. <laughs> Well, Mr. Wynn, as I was saying, uh, I went to the opera last night and decided that people don't understand opera, so I wrote myself with a commentator, and I want you to be the commentator. Well, why didn't you just say so before? Well, I tried to, but you seem to have a slight impediment in my speech. Uh, uh, what, will you do it? Oh, I'd love to do it. You know what I'll do, Archie? I'll go out and put on my opera clothes. 
I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Oh. <laughs> hey, Miss, Miss Archie, uh, this opera, I mean, this, this Carmen. Yes. Uh, this, uh, Mr. Wynn, is he the gentleman is going to make it clear? Uh, yes. <laughs> But he, uh, he's going to do sort of a commentary. Hey, a commentary. I guess I'm pretty good with the jokes myself. <laughs> I must send that one into the Reader's Digest. Uh, well, I hope they got a reader that can digest it. <laughs> this is something personal. It's something that both men and women should be aware of. And that's your own freshness and charm. Trust Mum for that. M-U-M. Mum. For Mum is the underarm deodorant with a unique cream formula that protects freshness all day, all evening. It smooths on in a jiffy. It's gentle. It's safer. Because it contains no harsh or irritating ingredients, Mum is safer for skin, for clothes, and most important, for your charm. So remember, after every bath and before every date, Smooth on mum. For you see, your bath washes away the past, but mum safeguards the future. And because mum is so effective, you will never experience that left out feeling. Really, personal daintiness can play a most important role in your future, in business as well as romance. Don't neglect it. So if you want to be sure you're nice to be near, depend on mum. M U M. Mum. Finnegan, no. uh, when Mr. Wynn is finished with the commentation, uh, I want you to holler, bravo. Bravo? What's that? Uh, it's an operatic time, like in baseball, you say, kill the empire. <laughs> but uh, we better get going with common. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Melnick, we're all ready to start the opera. Now, if there's anything that confuses you, uh, Mr. Wynn has some program notes and will be very happy to add to the confusion. As the chitin goes up, we find ourselves in scene one. I think that's odd. <laughs> now, scene one. Scene one is the cigarette factory. We know it is a cigarette factory <laughs> because there are doctors walking in and out of the building. <laughs> now, suddenly, suddenly Carmen appears, and she waits in the cigarette factory. She's a young girl still in her nicotine. <laughs> Now, Carmen, Carmen is very popular. She has hundreds of boyfriends, and she gives each one of them a lock of her hair. <laughs> Carmen, or as her friends call her, Baldy, <laughs> she, she is dressed in very gay colors. She is wearing a yellow blouse and a checkered skate, and as she walks down the street, men whistle at her. <laughs> they think she's a taxi cab, you know? <laughs> Carmen enjoys this little game and keeps her motor running. <laughs> I think that's very subtle. That's my name. <laughs> At this point, our hero, who is Don Jose, he ends it. Don Jose speaks to Carmen. Well, me petite cucaracha, <clears throat> chili billy bean. Who are you, senor? I am Don Jose, a gay caballero and hungry about town. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You are not Don Jose, the great lover. You see this badge? What does he say? To Molly, Inspector. <laughs> In Spain, this is a very big joke. <laughs> now, at this point... <laughs> At this point, Carmen discloses that she is Carmen, and Don Jose discloses that he is Don Jose. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, just as long as it's clear. <laughs> anyway, Carmen and Don Jose sing a duet. What a 
hunk of concrete food. Mr. Wynn, in, uh, in case we have some, uh, in case we have some dopes here, perhaps you better explain the word punctitude. Uh. Punctitude? Yes. Well, that means that common is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You see, that's the idea of punctitude. Of course, I don't like to be catty, but a great deal of her beauty is due to makeup, you know. In fact, common wears so much makeup that if you want to kiss her, you have to drill for it, you know. <laughs> Anyway, in the next scene, we see Carmen sitting on a park bench. Don Jose sneaks up behind her and puts his hands over her eyes. Both of his hands. He then he whispers in her ear. He says, Carmen, do you love me? And she says, of course I love you. Who are you? <laughs> this, this makes Don Jose suspicious. <laughs> Our next scene is the public square. The square speaks. <laughs> Uh, why are they <laughs> Who are you, pig? Uh, I am your hated rival. I am Don Schlemilio. <laughs> you are Don Schlemilio? Yes. I am Don Jose. And I am Don Carmen. Uh, I love Carmen. And I love Carmen. And I love Carmen. <laughs> you love Carmen? Yes. Once again, the infernal triangle. <laughs> Her, and he loves me. If he loves her, then I hate he. He loves me. Then so does she. This makes him fun for love of me. Oh, I hate you. And I hate you. But I hate you more than you hate me. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. We hate each other with a long <laughs> By now, by now, Don Jose and Don Flamilio hate each other. <laughs> And the audience is in a pretty nasty mood, too. <laughs> well, anyhow, in the next act, a year, a complete year has passed, and Carmen has gotten quite heavy. But Don Jose does not care. He still worships the very ground she sinks into. <laughs> ah, Senorita Carmen. Da. <laughs> Carmen... Can you ever forget that night in Madrid? Sure. Was it worse to you? (laughs) Zuza, Carmen, why is it you are so mean to me? It's because I hate you. I'm (laughs) bully. Then why for you go out with me? It's because I love suffer. Then Carmen, marry me. (laughs) Come in, I love you, will you marry me? I will marry no one, I am fancy free. But I cannot live without your love. I am a lost little dove. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. You met a fool, the one I love. You know, <laughs> it's really, it, it, it's a wonderful opera, this is. In the next act, it is the day of the big bullfight. <laughs> now, there is much excitement and everybody is having a good time. We even hear the vendors walking up and down through the arena. Get your red hot bullfighters, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, there is much excitement, and the Toreadors are having a good time. And now the bullfight starts. Don Flamilio faces the bull. He is a ferocious beast, and his nostrils quiver as he pours the ground. 
And the bull is pretty tough, too. <laughs> but Don Emilio and the bull stare at each other. <laughs> they cannot decide who will make the face move. So the bull tosses him for it. <laughs> you think that needs repetition? There's something with, there was a lull there. The bull tosses him for it. <laughs> I want to send that to some other comedian. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the meantime... <laughs> in the meantime, well, we're think. still talking about Carmen. Okay. In the meantime, Don Jose has proposed to Carmen again. This enrages Carmen, so she kills Don Jose. This gives Flamilio an idea, and he kills Carmen. Not to be outdone, Don Jose gets up and kills Flamilio. <laughs> and as the three of them lie there on the stage waiting for the undertaker... And now I feel I must drop dead. Drop dead. I fear that we can never wed. Drop dead. <laughs> the time has come when I must die. Da, 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 da. Drop dead. Drop dead. Drop dead. Drop dead. Mr. Wynn, uh, Mr. Wynn, I think you should explain that last part to the audience. Archie, uh, I've listened to this opera for ten minutes now. Yeah. I think you should explain the last part to the audience. What do you mean? Drop dead. <laughs> Mister, we're sure of it. Try just one tube of Benex Brushless Shave Cream, and we're sure you'll use Benex for life. Yes, we're certain that Benex, B-E-N-E-X, will give you the best shaves you've ever had. Benex gives extra easy shaves thanks to a special beard softening formula. Benex is extra smooth, lighter, so different it rinses off your razor instantly. Benex gives you extra comfort. A special after shaving action leaves your face feeling wonderful. Just try Benex. See for yourself. That's Benex, B E N E X. Benex brushless shave at your nearest drug counter. Get Benex tomorrow. <laughs> Why do you suppose there's so many people all over the world waiting to come to America? Sure, you know the reason. It's freedom. Freedom, the most wonderful word in the world and our most precious possession. Unfortunately, so many of us take freedom for granted. There are millions of people in the world who would give anything to be able to do something you do every day without thinking about it. I mean a simple thing like listening to news on the radio. We hear news without distortion of fact. Few people in other countries do. And this is only one of a long list of freedoms we Americans enjoy. But we must work to keep our precious freedoms. Work at being a good citizen by voting, by keeping informed, making our opinions known, and resisting all attacks on our political and religious rights. We must all do it, for freedom is everybody's job. Duffy's Tavern for this evening, but let's meet here again at the same time next Wednesday. Duffy's Tavern Transcribed is brought to you by Mum, the safer deodorant, and by Talus for well-groomed hair. Each Wednesday, Bristol Myers brings you Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.